Well, good morning, men of God. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. I don't know what to say. <laughs> you know, I look at what the Lord has done. I was when I was we were singing the song. I was on my knees and I was praying for my wife. And I was sitting there. There's a note over here saying, "Father, this is the first time ever." So while I'm preaching, she's preaching. <laughs> wow. I called her this morning and she was just thrilled. She said she had woke up at 3 in the morning with such joy. She was praying to the Lord. And she said, it's here. And I said, well, hon, you just go be what you are. Just enjoy yourself in the, the Almighty. I want to tell you a story, though, about Karen and I so that you understand the greatness of the love of God. Is this what I'm okay? Yeah. I want you to know about the greatest love of God because you're going to leave this mountain and some of you are going to forget right away the greatness of the love of God concerning you. And to know a love that goes way past understanding and knowledge. See, if you experience what Karen and I have experienced, which I believe you were supposed to get, it's for all mankind in God. There is a joy that God has for you that is non-containable. I mean, I was uh, telling Steve and I roomed three years in a row together at, at Man's Camp. Now, this is the first time a deluxe was actually deluxe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The other deluxe was less than, well, deluxe. It was deluxe. Yeah, and uh, I was telling the, what God has done in my life all the time. I just can't help it. I can't, with physical ailments that come along my journey, which I have in plenty, that no one ever knows about. And one of them is I come up here and I have, I've had a, a prostate problem for quite a long time, and they wanted to do lots of stuff. They've taken 32 hunks out of that thing, and uh, less than fun, way less than fun. <laughs> I said, is there anything left? And they said, it's still way large, and anyway, and all this, and all of a sudden you get up one day as the uh, age hits you. You don't know what's going down. You get up, and you just can't eat for the life of you. And it's exceedingly abundantly painful. Uh, first time it happened to me was in Iceland. I was see, visiting my family. And all of a sudden, I'm in pain like I never knew. And it was all night long. By the time they got me to an Icelandic hospital, they said my bladder was about to burst. It was a liter and a half in my... I don't even know what a liter is, but anyway. And uh, it was an opportunity. And uh, I looked back and I said, Steve was saying, uh, we're here this time and I'm still having the same opportunities. And and he's in the room, of course, I have to get up and try to go to the bathroom. And he was saying, he said to me, well, I hope you, you know, you can keep your joy. I said, no, you don't understand who I am. Honest to God, I'm always joyful. Amen. That's the truth. I wish I could, I, would, I, I wish I could tell, I'm not exaggerating to you. Amen. I was standing there in the night, trying to take a leak, can't, in pain like you can't imagine, leaning against the wall, okay, because I'm there so long just praying that something would happen and I burst forth in laughter. <laughs> in pain, and I said, now Father, this tent has given me some opportunity. <laughs> and I wanted you to understand something. There's not one, we're, we were all born with the same nature. We were born in sin. Okay? He has something for you. And some of us are like, like I said last night, some of us are fearful of Receiving love. We're afraid to be loved. We've got all these borders around us. I don't want anyone to know me. I don't want to know my weakness. I don't you're gonna I'm afraid. I'm literally fearful of being loved. And if you're fearful of being loved, you won't let the love of God have its way. And if you won't, you will never know joy. It's just gonna be words coming out of my mouth. But you will never experience it. You will not know the delight of the Lord will give you the desires of your heart. You will not know that you can be joyful always. And you can give thanks in everything, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Amen. But, if you knew what Karen and I did, see, see, we're two reprobates that should have gone to hell. There is no good in Karen. None. Zero. And she will let you know right off the get-go. She married a guy that had no good in him at all. Zero. So when Christ invaded our lives, after knowing who we are, we were stunned. <laughs> now we took off on a journey with God. And I'm not going to tell you that the journey was easy. 
When you're married to a reprobate, it's a little bit of an opportunity. <laughs> and she was. <laughs> I would tell her, you think I'm a reprobate? What do you think I married? You know? And I look back and I wanted you to listen to these words. I always made these personal. I've shared these with the Band of Brothers. Some of you guys come to Band of Brothers. And if you, if you have your Bibles, I'd like you to turn there. If you've you got your phones, they work. It's out of Romans 3, but I want to tell you how Karen and I read these things. We read together the Word, we pray together in the mornings, and we thank the Lord. We interrupt each other in prayer all the time like we do in a conversation. I'll be praying something, and she just, whoop, just comes right on into the thing. And it's not even an interruption, it's a conversation with God, it's an enjoyment. This morning when I was praying with her, blessing her, I got her on FaceTime, and so I could see her face, and I'm praying, and she's just bawling her face off. It was so precious. It was so precious. And then all of a sudden she just burst forth in like a song to the glory of God for me today and for all of you. I want you to see this in, in, in verse, actually it's in verse 10. This is, I told you guys, this is God's vocabulary, but for me, that, I want to read it so that you understand why we are what we are. Why love has become, the love of God has become so precious to us. It's chapter 3, Romans 3, verse 10. Okay. It's when it says there is no one righteous, not even one. Karen and I always put our name there. Gus and Karen aren't righteous, ever. We were never righteous. Not at all. Gus and Karen do not understand at all. We did not understand. She was raised in a religion. I was raised in a, as an American. Okay? She was raised as a Mormon. So she had a background in religion. All right, she was born in Provo, Utah. Now she left the Mormon church at 14. The reason she left the Mormon church is because the kids at school that were Mormons were shunning her because her dad drank coffee. Wow. I would say praise God for coffee. <laughs> Gus and Karen never see God. They've always turned away. They have become worthless. They never have done good. Gus and Karen never did good. Not ever one time. Gus and Karen's throats were like an open grave. Every time they opened their mouth, I could smell it coming out of the throat. The, their tongues, Gus and Karen, they practiced deceit. They both did it. They even deceived each other when they got married. There was no truth in them at all. The poison of vipers was on Gus and Karen's lips. Man, they could hurt people. Man, they could hurt each other. Man, they said things that were so vile, so wrong. And they did it all the time. Their mouths were full of cursing and bitterness. That's Gus and Karen. That was us. There's no doubt about it. That's who we are. Their feet were swift to shed blood. I used to tell people, I said, I'm probably one of the few men in the room that actually killed people. I killed them in war. I didn't go out and murder somebody. You know, but I killed them in war. I killed lots of people in war. And it didn't bother me at all. The only thing that bothered me is one time, killed this gook and Vietnamese. <laughs> See how fast that comes out of your mouth? <laughs> and they always told you, don't ever look at them. I don't know why they said that. The dude was laying there, we took him out right here, right through the lungs and heart. And he's laying on the ground, and I walked over and looked at this dude. And he's deader than a doornail, and that was the most handsome man I have ever seen in my life to this very day. I have never seen a man more handsome. And he had a smile on his face, and he had whitest teeth at that time that I had ever seen. Now we whiten our teeth. I had never seen teeth that white. And I stood there and looked at him, and I said, I'm just standing there. He's, in a, he's a, Viet, a North Vietnamese Army dude. I don't know what his rank was. He was in his khaki. We had his helmet off. You know, that had a jungle helmet. And I'm looking at him. We had the head, the holes right through here, the blood coming out like this on the ground, on the back. And I look at him, and I thought, wow, wonder who his mom and dad are. Wonder if he had a wife. Wonder if he had a girlfriend. He looks old enough to have kids. Looked like he was in his mid-20s. Not that I watch, but I'm not supposed to look at that. I have never gotten his face out of my brain. Swift to shed blood. Maybe you don't kill people, but you're swift to shed blood. So was Karen. You want to hurt, you want to hurt. You always go, that was Karen and me. 
Ruin and misery mark their ways. Good grief, yes. My wife was already, by the time she was 21, she was divorced. A mess. I met her in a nightclub. Our first date, I took her to the Whiskey A Go Go. <laughs> in Hollywood. You know why? Because you couldn't get into the Whiskey A Go Go. I can. I knew all the bouncers. I knew Hollywood stars. I knew all kinds of people. So I'm taking her on the Whiskey A Go Go at 11 o'clock at night. The line in the Whiskey A Go Go was three blocks long. Nobody could get in. I walk right to the front. The bouncer goes, Yeah, it goes. I'm like, Woo! Yeah. <laughs> There was a show called The Mob Squad in those days. Yeah. I don't know if you remember it. Yeah. Remember Link? Yeah. The black guy with the hair? Link was a friend of mine. Walked up. Hey, guys! Yeah! Well, the whole Mob Squad crew was there. We're sitting down there having a lot of booze with them. And I cared always how I had a Harvey Wallbanger. And I, drank, I just had a beer with a shot of wild turkey. And uh, we're sitting there. And, and all of a sudden, Link's looking like he is spaced. And the next thing I go, bam! He hits the floor. And when he hits the floor, he, he pukes. And I'm thinking, this is my first day with Karen. And I'm thinking, this is not going the way I planned. You know? And I said, you want to get out of here? That's how we started. We're in that condition. That's our condition. We met every day. We dated. I mean, every single day. I met her on January 16th. Asked her to marry me on February 16th. And I found this pastor. Not too long to go there, but... <laughs> and we got, I ran to a pastor, and so I called him. I said, hey, I know a pastor, I can She goes, you know a pastor? I said, yeah, of course I do, you know. Great. <laughs> I did all my research, and I called him up, and I don't know churches, I don't know pastors. I simply said, hey, do you, do you guys do marriages? He said, yeah. I said, well, I want to get married. He said, okay, well, come on over. And they had, uh, in those days, the house right next to the church. We went over, he went to the office. And right then and there, he led Karen to Christ. Ticked me off. <laughs> I'm serious to you, guys. I want you to know this. There is no good in our nature. If you think you can fine-tune yourself, if you think you're supposed to fine-tune somebody else, you're wrong. There has to be a complete born-again experience. It has to be the surrender of your will. It has to be the surrender of his kingdom, righteous peace and joy. You have to surrender to his love. And the moment you actually do that, you will be filled with a joy that will never end. I don't mean you won't have pain. I don't mean you won't have trials. I've had many. I've had to learn the power of God's love and grace. But I'm going to tell you, there is a joy that most men never have. They never get it. They're always struggling. They always got a reason why. They always got a yeah but, yeah but, yeah but. There are no yeah buts. The yeah but will send you to hell and it will take your marriage to hell. You've got to know, these are wonderful prayers. Forgive us our trespasses. We forget. We don't forgive anybody. You've got to be wounded deep to know the power of God's love. Deep. So you know that you have something to give away. What are you giving away? The love of God in the midst of your pain. Because He gave it to you. You can't help yourself. I used to say, I wish I could go back. I wish sometimes, oh Lord, could you just let me go back so I could hit somebody again? <laughs> <laughs> but I was a young man, I, did, I said it all the time. The way of peace they do not know. Men of God, I want to tell you this, until you surrender to the will of God, until you surrender to the love of God, until you understand that, the depth of that kind of love, you do not know the way of peace. You are in turmoil as I speak. You're going to go home and there's going to be turmoil. You're going to judge one another. You judge other churches. You judge your wife. You judge people going down the street. You see somebody all pierced up. Remember Kevin when he used to come? All tattooed all over the place. And first time I met him, former Marine of all things. Former Marine, dude. I mean, I'm talking, I mean, former Marine. He's got the old cross tattoo and the tattoos all over the place. Here's every place you can put something on his face. You know, and I looked at him. He came to Band of Brothers. He came to Band of Brothers. And I said, dude, glad you're here. You know, you look a little spacey. Yeah. <laughs> And I just said, I said, hey, okay, you form Marine? He said, yeah, I go, Semper Fi. No, so I said, okay, what's the deal? What's the deal here? Human yeah, pincushion. Yeah, human pincushion. And he told me some other things. He didn't just want to be like everybody else. He didn't want to be like everybody else. Those things are all gone today. And he's, a, he's becoming more and more of a great man of God. Because there's no fear of God before the rise. If we understood the who God was, if we had any uh, indication of who God was at all, 
we would have a reverence and a fear for the one who says he loves us, for God so loved the world. In that condition, that's my condition, that's your condition, whether you understand it or not. That's what I read about Karen and I, is your condition, that's God's vocabulary about mankind. And he says, in that condition, I want you to know something. I love you. I'm coming for you. And I'm coming for you, and I'm not going to come and condemn you. I will never, 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 never condemn you. I will wake you up out of the dead, and I have a gift for you. I have a great gift. It's called my grace. It's called my love. I have a great gift, which you have to receive it. You'll never earn it. But here's one thing you have to know. It's by faith from first to last. It is a righteousness. It is a righteousness that you experience. You've never known life. It's going to scare you. The moment you start like a talk. Jeff, you know, that's not, I said, the moment you start to call on God, you're going to feel afraid. We were talking about today, weren't we? Just, he says, the moment he stepped out, he went, ugh! <laughs> no, it, it was, oh, and I felt the same way. I remember those days. And this gift is from righteousness. And what it is, it's a righteousness that I have been freed. I've never known a feeling of being freed from my own shame. I've never known a freedom of being freed from my own lust and anger. So what is it? Listen to these words, and then I'm going to take you real quick to a text, and we're going to have a communion time. And when we have the communion time, we will, we will invite you to come by yourselves to present yourself before the Lord. You present yourself before the Lord. As often as you do this, you declare the Lord's death for what? He died for me. Amen. What do you mean? He who knew no sin, God made sin. I declare today that God died for me, and I became the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Amen. I received the righteousness of Christ, and I received it. I didn't earn it. It's mine. Amen. He yeah. gave it to me. Who gave you this joy? Jesus. God. Yeah. Who gave you the Holy Spirit? The Lord. Who comforted you? Christ. I have no one else to boast in. Somewhere we got to go there. You then lay your hands on your wife. I'm going to tell you. And I, I don't know. If we're, are we taped? Yeah, we still taped. Oh, that's good. Okay, I want to tell you a story about Mark Knight. We separated in our ninth year. She separated, blew me away. I was a senior pastor of a church, started a church, and all of a sudden she took off. She went to another state, she started dating, she did all these other things. No lady that's preaching today. <laughs> okay? It was horrible. Took the wind out of my sail. I knew nothing about it. I didn't know what to do. I mean, I'm upside down. I, I mean, I can't even figure out what's going on. I got three kids. I'm trying to put my life in order. I lost 42 pounds in a month and a half. Nothing was right. Nothing was right. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to say it. You look to the Word, you feel like it hell is on you. The church all of a sudden says, your life is such a mess, we don't want to see you anymore. The guy that was the head of the church was one of my best friends. He said, your life is such a mess, I don't ever want to see you again. Last time I saw him was in a coffee shop. And he walked out. I never saw him. I'm by myself. I'm trying to do something with kids. My son is 12. I got a daughter 10. And I got a son 8. And I'm sitting in a mess. And the only thing I could think to do was cry to the Lord and beg Him to cause Karen to fall in love with Him. I didn't know what else to say. I never asked her to come home. I didn't want my marriage restored. I just knew she was a mess. She kept believing the lie. Even though she'd come to Christ, she went back to believing a lie that she was worthless. She believed it. And the moment you believe that lie, your emotions tag right back into it. And if you go to those emotions, they will take you to hell. Sin wants your death. Wants the death of your marriage. Don't give up on everybody. God didn't give up on you. Wouldn't you know it? I was telling this to Steve about it, and I said, I won't go to all the details. I never go to all the details. I let Karen tell the details. She finally has told all the details. It's really amazing. God will cause all these things to work together. And I said, three months later, all of a sudden, I'm regrouped. I'm back in the roofing business. I've got my kids in a different school. I've rented a three-bedroom apartment. And all of a sudden, I hear a knock on the door. Kids are in school. I open the door, and there's Karen standing there. Standing there, not looking like a woman of God at all. Not even close. Cigarette in hand. Okay? And I'm looking at her going, wow. I said, what do you want? <laughs> Very graceful. <laughs> She said, I want to come home. I said, not a chance. I am not let I want to come home. No. I'm just getting my act together. Trying to get some weight back on me. I'm working. The kids are doing good. I'm, no, no, no. Talked for about 15 minutes. I let her in the house. 
And right after I met her in the house, the kids came home from school. And where they from? She's been in the house ever since. Amen. The next two years were like hell. Absolute hell. I was never so miserable in my life. The love of God is greater than that. Amen. The love of God is greater than your brokenness, greater than your swearing. You've got to know where you started. He says, I will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. I'm going to promise troubles are coming, but I will be there with you. Trust me in this moment. Trust me in this moment. Start praying. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law and the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Some of us here have. Yes. You know it. Some of you men here have committed adultery. Do not. Do not let that thing hold you in its place. Yes. The blood of Christ covered that. Yes. That is not what you are. That may be what you did, but that does not declare who you are. The blood of Christ declares who you are, and I'm going to tell you, He declares you righteous and holy. That's why as often as you do this, do this remembrance of Him. Amen. You declare the Lord's death. You declare your freedom. Who set you free? Who set a man like you free? Oh God, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. Watch this. Do not murder, do not steal, do not covet, whatever the commandments there may be are summed up in this one law. Rule. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to its neighbor. Love does no harm. <laughs> God so loved the world, he did no harm. God so loved the world that he came without condemnation once. God came and he could meet with anybody. He could be on a cross can't even recognize him and simply say to the Father, Father, forgive them. They don't have a clue what they're doing. Amen. I look at this and I want to give you out of 1 Peter. If you look at 1 Peter 4 8. And then I just have one other thing that I prayed for you today. 1 Peter 4 8. Above all, this is what you've got to, if you'll receive the love of God, if you'll receive righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, if you'll receive it, it'll happen. It's there. It's already there. You've just got to let it out. You've got to let it out. And I'm going to tell you how to let it out. Above all, love each other deeply. Why? Because love covers the multitude of sins. And don't you need your sins covered? Yeah. So does everybody else. Yeah. You, can, you can go and join it. So, what is this about? Well, look at Ephesians with me. Ephesians 3, 14. For this reason, I kneel before the Father. I want you to know I did this for you early this morning. For whom the whole, the whole family in heaven and earth rise his name, is out of chapter 3, 14. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power. Now watch this. Power through his spirit in your inner being. Why? So that Christ may dwell in your hearts. I'm asking God that He would dwell in your hearts. If he dwells in your hearts, you're going to be joyful. If you know where you were, you believe that Christ will dwell in your heart, you'll be joyful. If you don't get joy, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If you won't go there, you're afraid to praise the Lord. You're afraid you're going to look stupid. That's what our problem is. We're fearful. Sin is always fearful. It's always condemning. You're not worth it. Not you. Maybe for God, but not you. Maybe for Karen, but not you. Oh, yes, it is. I pray that Christ will build your heart to the end, man. And watch this. So that Christ will build your heart through, through faith. You've got to believe what God says. You've got to come and believe. And I pray that you, being rooted and established, I want you rooted. I want you established. I want the roots going down deep into the love of God. That you may have power. Why, why do you want your roots deep? Why have People say, are you really, that Karen, if she was here today preaching with me, that would really have been fun. <laughs> okay? She would tell you, I am what I am. Because of the grace of God, let the roots go deep into his love. Let it be rooted. And what begins to happen to you? You'll be established, love, that you may have power 
for what? Together with all the things, that's all of us, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ for you. Oh, you're loved in the midst of your storms. Your love, your dearly love. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge. Why? And here it is, men of God, that you and I may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Did you hear that? Yes. Who's going to be filled to what? What does it mean to be filled to the fullness to the measure of God? That's all of God, all of the Father, all of the Son, all of the Holy Spirit. Where is He? In me. In me. So. Listen to this. The Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. And just as God raised Christ from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies. Thank you. Who lives in you? The full measure. You want the full measure? You've got to surrender your will. you got to surrender your will. Are you ready? Will you surrender your will? Will you literally say, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In me as it is in heaven, in me, I don't care. I surrender it all. Do with me whatever you want. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Then he goes this way. This is so beautiful. He will give your life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you, living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, therefore, you are under, under no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. Yes. Amen. 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 Amen? Amen. This is God in you. Amen. So, Steve, we're going to come, we're going to do a communion, aren't we? Just give the address for you this week. Uh, Romans 8, and that's uh, 11 and 12. Romans 8, 11 and 12. But I wanted you to know that something, men of God, this is a great time. But you have to, as you come, we're going we're gonna to have a communion time here. We're going to bring the things up. But we want you to be able to say, look, come with joy. Come with thanksgiving. Don't come up here moping. <laughs> Good grief. If you knew you were dead, if you knew you were dead, you, don't, what do you think Lazarus came out of the grave like? <laughs> I don't think he went, oh, bummer. My life. <laughs> if you knew that what I read about me and Karen was you, and you knew that you were dead in your trespass and sin, and you knew he awakened you, and he gave you faith to believe, and you said, I want to, I will receive your grace. I will receive it. It's now mine. He gave it to me. It's a gift. But once God gives me the gift, he gave Grant, Gary the gift. It's now Gary's. That's right. He can't take it away. God will never take it away. He says, now, not only this, I want you to know this love. I want you to know how wide and deep it is. And I want you to know for sure. Men of God know this. I promise you, God says, nothing will ever separate you and me again. Amen. Amen. Because the love that is found in Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. Nothing. And you've got to get there for the transformation of your mind. Amen. Amen. Let me just pray over you see this. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. I thank you for these men. Father, we are delighted to come into your presence, and we have come right well. And I pray for every one of them that today, Father, we get the privilege of remembering. We get to declare what you did to Christ. Changed our lives. <coughs> that he died for our sins, that you made him sin, so that we now have become the righteousness of Christ. And these men, let them come delighting. Let them choose. To let your peace dwell in them. Let them choose, oh Father, to let your word richly overflow in their life. Let them choose your kingdom of righteousness. Let them choose that your joy, your joy is their strength. Yes. And that they are going to go to be men that will become <coughs> thankful men in all circumstances. So Father, bless them continually. This is a precious moment of time. And we honor you right well in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.